Hello there everyone, the Andrade here, and welcome back to episode 20 of our Enigmatica 6 Expert Let's Play series, where today we are getting quite a lot of magic progression done uh, and getting some cool nifty tools to help out in the future, so let's get started. Hey there everyone, did you know that I stream on Twitch? Yes, it is true. I have started streaming on Twitch Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. If you want to stop on by, feel free. Just want to let you guys know that we're currently playing through Pokemon Heart Gold Randomized Nuzlocke, and some of you in the comments may have a Pokemon named after you. If you want to check that out, go ahead and uh, you can check out the VODs, or if you search YouTube for The Andrada Live, I do cross-post my uh, Twitch VODs over here on YouTube for those who prefer this platform, or you can stop on by live and get, you, get your Pokemon named after you you know in person or well as in person as it can be um but yeah twitch.tv slash the andrada hope to see you there welcome back everybody to another glorious day here in the world of the andrada in enigmatica 6. Uh, a couple of things i want to touch on first uh if you grow this papyrus in your base this stuff grows insanely quick just saying uh i just unloaded this and there this thing was full of papyrus like I, I don't know, like, is it glitched out or something? I don't know, but it grows super duper fast. Went ahead and planted all of our uh, Ars Nouveau trees back here, plus our Sky Slime or our Green Heart Slime back there. Probably could plant the Sky Slime too if needed. Uh, we'll just leave it alone as is for now. I went ahead and set up the Crystallizer. I did this actually last episode uh, in which we had this set up. I don't know if anybody uh, noticed because I didn't didn't say anything about it. But what I want to do is go ahead and grab a hopper for it because apparently it outputs to the inventory or it is an auto output. Makes sense. But uh, yeah, the crystallizer, it was just uh, this recipe here just required some of that arc that. Yeah, arcane gold is what it's called. So not too difficult to make. And this is kind of our de facto Ars Nouveau area. So I'm just setting it up over here onto this barrel and then it can just keep producing these source gems uh, over time for us. So there you go. You're just going to produce source gems, dump them into this barrel, and we're good to go with that. Our bees have been doing great. Uh, our Oreo bee is a little slow, but he is alone. So, you know, he's the only one around, so we can't really do much with him. But I'm not going to complain too much about that. He's doing the best, okay? Uh, so today, what we need to work on, again, is continuing with our magic. So I think what I want to do, we're going to go ahead and head into the Undergarden, and we're going to go ahead and set up our Blood Altar Uh and get that going. So I have an idea for how we can get a lot of life essence with one of our spawners that we have, because we do have cardboard box, uh, maybe over here with a spawner in it. Yes. So we can use that and then create a little small area where we can have mobs come to us and then take them out with the, the knife and do the thing with the sacrificial knife or the dagger of sacrifice and get, get going. So I like that idea. Uh, so the blood altar is going to require all of this stuff, which is a, a cooking pot. I believe I have everything I need for this. There goes one of our conduits. Gone, gone, gone. And then we're going to need two uh, gold inlays, which I have one. Uh, conveniently, I have one. Exactly. Uh, and then we're going to need some other stone, which is going to be arcane stone thrown into our fire. I do have some arcane stone as well. We're going to need two of these. We're going to pop over here to our occultism area and throw that in there. It should be pretty quick. Bam, other stone crafted. We can just quickly come back home. Uh, so that is that. Part of the sea, we might have one. Oh, the cooking pot there. No, so we do need to craft up a heart of the sea. Remind me what that is. That is an algal lantern. Do I have the algal bricks? No. Why would I? So I need algal blend. Um, let's grab like, we'll grab a healthy amount of it, I guess. Half a stack. Yeah. And then we'll just put the rest of this stuff back away where it belongs. Uh, did I have any in here? No. And we can just accelerate that a bit. And by a bit, I mean quite a bit. We have eight hours of time available to us. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, you made up the seared bricks. I forgot we were going to get into Tinker's Construct. Turns out we don't actually need to. Uh, we can make the um, uh, Tinker's Bronze in the Induction Smelter, which is the route we're going to go. Eventually, we are going to need to set Tinker's up, but I'm not uh, 
not too concerned with it just yet. Okay, so that is that along with a aquamarine. Running low on these, I need to go out and go explore. These are found like in rivers and stuff, so it's not like it's super, super duper rare. We literally have some outside of our base, so it's not like a big problem that we don't have that going yet, but or a bunch of it, but we can we can make it happen. Boop, heart of the sea. And now we should be able to make a blood altar. Yes. Okay. So with our blood altar taken, let's go ahead and make sure we're doing our blood magic section uh, because we want to make sure that we're getting all of our rewards because we like rewards, right? Farmer's delight. Perfect. More food. Vegetable curry. I really need to start eating all of these different foods. So then our next step in this is going to be making the um, well, that wants us to make a Mark II. Incense altar is something I'd like to do as well, which requires another cooking pot. So not today. And this is the polished wood planks from Eidolon. So we're not going to be getting into the incense altar anytime soon, but we could. Yeah. So the quest book, this quest book is for the uh, the standard Enigmatica six uh, quest line, which is why it shows the dagger of sacrifice as a level two craft. But it's actually not. It's a level one. We can go ahead and do this now. So let's check out what we need for Tinker's bronze. Um, that is going to be made in our induction smelter with copper and glass. And it is a what? Three to one gets us three and we only need two. So we just need three of you. And then some glass, regular glass, if I have any. Need to smelt up some more glass. I did end up converting almost all of it. Well, actually, pretty much all of it to the uh, clear glass. And you're over here. Okay. So Tinker's Bronze. And then we just need to make this. Uh, I don't know if I have any pewter inlays in there, so we'll just make some more. Pretty sure I used them. And there we go. Dagger of Sacrifice. So that takes care of the tier one blood altar. Uh, we're still working on this stuff, this stuff. Uh, Mage Bloom seeds. I just need to make these so I can get them growing. Let's do that really quick. There was four source gems. And then any kind of any kind of seed, which we're going to have seeds out here. So that's fine. I just want to get these made so that uh, we can plant them and start getting more because we're going to need them in the future. Especially if we want to get any of ours Nouveau's armor and stuff, which would be nice when I'm like exploring and flying so that I can get my mana back quicker. And it doesn't require any source for this craft. So, bam. Uh, excuse me. Where did it go? Anybody? Bueller? There we go. Uh, and actually, if we go to the Ars Nouveau section, I did craft the crystallizer, so I should be able to actually pick up my agronomic source link here. This one is full, by the way. And complete that quest, too. Oh, that was not what I wanted to do. I wanted to put you down. And then Mage Bloom can come over here in place of source berries. And uh, how are we doing on our flax, by the way? Has flax been growing pretty well? Three. Yes, it's been it's been growing. I'm not going to say pretty well, but it's growing. Um, what else can we pick up quest wise? So we got the crystallizer gets us the glyph of light and we can learn that. Right. Are we supposed to just be able to right click to learn this? Do I need my R's book on me? Oh, apparently you do. OK. The nice thing with that is, is every time you learn a, a, a glyph, it gives you more um, mana. So just by by virtue of learning, we're getting more mana out of it. Mage Bloom is going to get us the Glyph of Harvest. And what is this? Arcane Bricks. Can I just use Arcane Stone for this or do I have to actually? Yeah, OK. Just checking to see, make sure we got all the things that we have available to us done. Getting all the quest rewards. I like rewards, you know? OK. So what do we need to do next? Uh, grab our cardboard box, head into the undergarden and do the thing. So we have our dagger of sacrifice and our blood altar, which is basically all we're going to need. I'm going to grab. I don't know if it's going to work. 
well, but we're going to grab a feral flare lantern and put it out there in the undergarden with us. Uh, and what about what about a mega torch? What was the cost of you? Uh, blocks of gold and then any kind of log. How am I doing on gold, by the way? Oh, we're doing pretty good still. I have not mined since... I, I don't even know how many episodes it's been since we mined. Basically, since we set this up and I let that thing process all of our stuff is mm, the last time that we did any major mining. Maybe for one-off stuff, but nothing nothing too crazy. Um, Mega Torch. Now, is a Mega Torch going to stop a spawner from working? It's a good question. I don't have an answer to that, actually. We'll find out. Okay. Um, I'm going to need some sort of building blocks. So let's grab... What do I have the most of? Netherrack? Basalt? Dirt? Uh, sure. We'll do it on a Netherrack. Similar to how our other setup is. Let's grab two stacks of that. And cardboard box. Uh, no, I have a cardboard box. Uh, we'll grab an extra one. I always want to have one on me. Sawdust not found. That is a lie. There is tons of sawdust somewhere. You can go ahead and be auto-inputting, by the way. Yeah. I don't know why I clicked request again. Okay, so let's head into the Undergarden after we take a quick nap. Okay, so what we have is uh, Undergarden, Mega Torch, Feral Flare. We'll see how this is going to work for us. Um, but I've placed my Blood Altar down, and then I've just built this simple just box out of the Netherrack here. Put our cardboard box. I have some water here. These did turn into source blocks back there. I'm not concerned about it because the enemies are going to get aggroed towards me. But ultimately, what I want to have happen is them to land here so I can smack them with the hammer, right? Uh, or with the uh, dagger. So let's go ahead and take off the cardboard. I should pick it up. And these are Atom mobs. Hopefully they can spawn here. I'm not entirely sure. If not, we'll go find another spawner somewhere. We can. There's spawners all over the place. Yeah, it doesn't look like they're going to want to spawn here. Okay. Like I said, that's okay. We can... Uh, we can solve that problem. We have their spawners all over in our in the world. We can go and grab that skeleton spawner that was down in that that pirate ship if we really wanted to. Um, let's see, where else do I know of spawners that are going to be like super duper available? There'd be spawners in here. Um, I just those skeletons. Oh well, you know what? The dagger sacrifice one shots things, doesn't it? Yeah. So let's go to the Guardian Temple, and then let's uh, let's fly over there, and we're going to do this. Uh, you know what? I actually need to go home. I need to bring a milk with me because I'm not going to be able to do anything if... And actually, don't we need like three buckets of milk? I'm not going to be able to break the spawner after I place it if I can't mine. And we're not going to be able to mine because we're going to get mining fatigue. And hopefully it'll work. Hopefully they'll be able to spawn over there. I don't know. Maybe they're set. They can't spawn in the uh, Undergarden. Highly possible. Who knows? Let's waste some more experience. Perfect. Put that there. Break that. Oh, look. I didn't even need to grab the uh, stuff. Okay. I do want to check out because we haven't explored this thing fully yet. Like, is there... Oh, and there's the mining fatigue. Is there anything hidden here? Oh, there's a spawner. And this is spawning those guys. Okay. We already have a spawner. I don't need a second one. Nothing secret here, at least. Jump up, buddy. What is going on here? It's because I broke too many things and it's all it's all funky. There we go. Okay. Let's try and break these. Oh, I thought there would be something behind the bookshelves for sure. And nothing there. Okay, well, that's fine. Let's just go ahead and on home. Put the junk that we grabbed away. Uh, cardboard, you go into my backpack, you can go away, you can go away, you have a spawner in you. All right, there we go. So skeletons can spawn in here, and it figures they would get stuck where I don't want them to, but that's okay. We can just... Look at that. Already filling up. 
Silverfish, you can die too. Come on, guys. Eventually, we can set up some better structure for this. I don't know what the uh, limit is for where these things can spawn. But yeah, look at that. Bam. Including all this silverfish. That's, you know, it, it's something. It helps, at least. So this thing spawns skeletons and silverfish, apparently. Come on over, guys. Need some sort of better mob mover. Fans or something. Create fans would work. We can set up some encased fans, I guess. Are we full? Yeah, we're full. Okay. So then we can just cover up the bucket and we don't have to worry about it anymore. This guy's too far away to die immediately. Okay, there's too many enemies now. I need to I need to break it. I need to get a the cardboard box on there. Nope. Oh, now I just cardboard boxed the netherrack. That. There we go. Jeez. Shut off. Alright, get out of here. All you nasty silverfish. Get out of my world. Nobody wants to see you. I would pick up the one spawner that has the silverfish, you know? That's okay, though. We're making it work. We're making it work. That's it? Okay, cool. So, there we go. We have full blood in our blood altar, and we can actually start crafting. So the first thing that I want to do is go ahead and throw our unholy sign in there and get ourselves a blood orb. So let's do that. And it's going to do its craft. I think that costs like 2,000 blood magic-y stuffs. Life essence is what it's called. Um, but we should be able to uh, go back up here to these quests. And our next step is blood orb and unholy symbol. Apparently, the dependency on this is the magic workbench, though. So getting this now is not going to do too much for us. We can tick accelerate it. And oh, it was 7000. OK, but there we go. We have a weak blood orb. We can bind it to us and we're good to go. Quest completed, weak blood orb. And we get a charm of regeneration out of that. Now this thing does have durability, but when we turn it on, it gives us regen two as needed. So we can use that when uh, you know the, the going gets tough, the tough get going. Okay, so with that being done, we can now work on um, other stuff. We can get into the magic workbench, I guess. We're just progressing through. Um, I do need another conduit for this, but we have one more. Let's go take a look. Our biggest uh, limiter is going to be this red carpet because I don't think that we've gotten enough of this stuff, enough flax to get the linen thread. So let's go back home. We have blood magic set up. Uh, our blood altar is almost empty, but we can. you saw how easy it was to fill up. I just got to turn that spawner back on, give it a little bit of tick accelerating. Dagger sacrifice works great for it. It one shots every enemy that's within range because of the way that it works and we're getting uh, bones and arrows out of it too um blood orb you can go into my inventory i probably should have just left that sitting in there to absorb the essence um but i need to go actually i need bone meal we're gonna accelerate this flax so let's get some bone blocks And what's the best way to convert you? So I know I can craft you down into nine. Can you be pulverized? No. So just crafting is going to be the best way. Let's get a bunch of flax. Let's check out this papyrus. Look at that. Look how crazy that papyrus is. I probably should just stop growing it. I really don't know what's going on. The, the backflow of that is driving me nuts. Uh, flax. let that thing pass just in case it messes something up i don't know okay so we got 18 flax plus four is that going to be enough who knows we'll find out so what do we need to do we need a total of two of these right we need two of these to make the uh carpet right because this just counts as wool but it's not wool so we need these linen threads which is just some sticks 
and flax. So we can do this. We should be able to request two of these. It's going to get us 16. Don't I need 24 of these if I remember correctly? Can I request another one? Still missing flax. All right. If I'm remembering correctly, when I initially planned all this out, we needed 24 of these. Because you are going to make uh, this stuff. No, you're going to make bolts of linen cloth. Yeah, so there's one. So I need some more of these. Three more of these, which means we're going to need a little bit more flax. OK, uh, well, we got more flax seeds. I'm going to go ahead and go bone meal up a bunch of this and get some more flax. OK, there we go. White linen turned into carpet white linen carpet, and then we should just need some red dye, uh, red dye. We can turn this into red linen carpet, right? Yeah, but it's one in one. Uh, so let's get some, don't I have rose bush? Yeah, let's plant rose bushes out there. That way we have unlimited red dye as needed. So you need to get some bone meal. Uh, and I can probably actually take down these berry bushes now because I'm not really utilizing them. I need to get the uh, that guy grown again too. Uh, let me get some bone meal. The uh, snow golem. The information has been provided to me on how to actually grow the snow golem properly. So, But again, we live near a snow biome, so it's not terribly too detrimental to us at the moment, but it will be in the future. We'll need some snow. Rose bush. I think we can mill this and get some extra dye out of it. A green dye. Nice. Cool. Yeah, 46 red dye. I'll take it. So we're going to do this and this. She's going to get us two of those. You guys go over there. And a green dye. And red dye. We are slowly starting to run out of room. I think we're filled up in this chest, so we're slowly working our way this way. So I'm going to either have to add another row of chests or we'll figure some other solution out here soon. But that gets us the red linen carpet, which means we can get the magic workbench now with our last uh, conduit that we have. Uh, I need the pewter inlays. So we need two of these. Uh, not two sets. I meant just two. And then we're going to need this vexing archwood wood, which is just going to be some of our vexing wood just crafted up in a four by four. And that only gets us three. So we lose one. That's OK. Uh, and the red linen carpet. And this is our last conduit. So I, in between episodes, I'm going to go and get more Nautilus shells uh, for the conduits. We have Heart of the Seas craftable Nautilus shells. It, it's just these. So I'll go and get more shells off around the beach like we did before and then uh, go from there. Now, the magic workbench, can this be put anywhere or does this have to be used in a specific biome or a specific area? It doesn't seem to be the case. So now I should be able to get my blood orb out and I had an extra unholy sign and that'll complete that quest. There we go. Bam. So then our next step is to get into the alchemy table, which is stone altars from Eidolon, tinted jar, blank slate, protective fabric. It's going to require some rubber. So we're going to have to get into the latex portion of things back in the tech side, which we haven't done. So we're back, heading back over to tech side. So this is where we're going to cap out. So our next goals are to go into this side of things and get this going. So we need to figure out where the heck we're going to get these worms, but we also need to get the Nebu drops. Um, so, yeah, basically, we're, we're at the point where we need the scanner, which means we need this stuff. And I have the spider eyes. I have that block of source gems. Easy peasy. We have magic clay. Yeah. All right. So let's get ourselves a scanner made up because we're going to need the Nebu drop. So I'm going to go ahead and place this magic workbench uh, uh, over here. I guess this can kind of be our magic area. Sure. You can go right there. OK, we're getting there. 
but we're doing a lot of things and it may seem like I'm, I'm like running around a lot, but we're getting a lot of things done, which is which is what I want to want to happen. We're getting we're we're making progress quickly through these uh, different magic mods, which is allowing us to set up the infrastructure going forward because the magic workbench, uh, we're going to actually need two of these. So we're going to end up having to craft another one. Um, in order to get into astral sorcery, but this is what allows us to do all the crafting in um, Eidolon. So if we want to make this gravity belt, we're going to need to use the magic workbench. And when we get to the prestigious palm, we're going to need to use this. Um, this is going to require Batania, which we could actually probably make. We can make pretty much everything of this now if I wanted to use that shadow gem. Still haven't decided. I do love the prestigious palm, though. The plus four reach distance is fantastic. Um, destruction gadget, get off my inventory again. Okay, so what we're going to do is go ahead and make this scanner, and we need to see how this works. Aluminum plates, we have sky slime crystal is just a piece of sky slime. Smelt it up. So let me grab one of these. Let's clear this thing out. You can go there, and then you can go there, and it is smelted or blasted specifically. It is blasted. Okay, so we don't have a blast furnace. Oh, we do. Okay. I still have this guy set up. Can I get over to it? And some coal. Blast up. And there's the sky slime crystal. Okay. And then we have that. We have that. This is kind of a cyan glass pane. Cyan shimmering mushroom. We can uh, craft that down. Right? Can we turn that into dye? With some RGB honeycombs, we can. Or just with the uh, pestle and mortar. What if I... Can I mill it? Mill? Yeah, we can. It is our only one. That's okay, though. We'll get the other flavors later. And by other flavors, I mean like all the other dyes and stuff. Okay, so that is glass panes. Cyan dye. There we go. Didn't mean to do that again, but that's okay. All right, so that takes care of that. We need copper rods. Uh, do I have copper rods available to me? I don't have the hammer. We have the hammer here. Tell me you don't want specific MBT data. You do. Just request those then. Okay. And everything, just the spirit attuned gem, which is going to be a source gem thrown into the fire outside. Let's just make like 15 of those or 16 of them. Just bolt craft. That way we have them done, ready to go. And we're, we're remember, we're producing source gems over there, so it's not that big of a deal. Okay, back inside. And now we can make ourselves a scanner. And let's see how this works. I never used this mod before, but no scanning modules are installed. Okay, so we can't do anything until we actually get a module. I'm going to assume a shift click opens it up. Yes, okay. So then we want to get ourselves the scanner block module. I believe I have a lodestone, didn't I? I found a lodestone. Yes, I have one, so that's good. Uh, so let's go ahead and make the blank scanner module. So we're going to need to get that apotheosis boss scared me. Uh, we're going to need to make some of this stuff. What do we need? Silver nuggets, tablet of scrying, green heart pressure plate. Okay, that's you. And then we can do this. There's the pressure plate done. We're going to need silver nuggets. We got to have uh, different kinds. Be or dictionary. Okay. There's silver nuggets. We have magic clay available to us. Tablet of scrying is going to require a block of source gems. And, and glowstone. We don't have actual glowstone crafted up. We just have the dust. And that should be good to go. 
And then what else? Everything's good. All right. Blank scanner module. And then we can get the lodestone scanner module, which is the block one. So if we put this in here, we can now scan for modules. So if I scan for blocks. So if I were to say, want to scan for, I don't know, um, uh, what, what, what do I want to scan for to test this out? Cobbled deep slate. So if I point at this, did that set that block to cobble deep slate? How does this work? Do I need to like craft it with a block? Because the module at scannable Use on a block to configure the module. Ah, okay. So I have to actually use the module. So if I were to say, I want to scan for this and then put it in there. There we go. And that's what it does. And it tells me, oh, nice. Oh, look at that. Cobble deep slate. There's some cobble deep slate down there over there. That's fancy. Okay, so then all we got to do is go to... Okay, can you go away, though? How do I get it to go away? Is it going to fade over time? I hope so, because that's kind of... I don't want that there forever. Get out of there. Nope. Uh, Look, there's a pillar of cobbled deep slate from when I was mining. Inactive modules all right well hopefully that goes away i'm gonna just look this way or this way so we can wrap up the episode oh my helmet broke darn i never noticed uh anyway uh, if you enjoyed today's episode please feel free to like comment subscribe i do appreciate it and it really does help out the channel uh